Hello, my name is C.D. Dickerson. I have been a trustee of Save Venice since 2014. I currently serve on the Projects Committee, the body charged with recommending which works of art Save Venice should restore. My day job, I'm curator and head of the Department of Sculpture and Decorative Arts at the National Gallery of Art in Washington. Welcome to another installment of our video series highlighting works of art that Save Venice has restored or is in the process of restoring. Today I'm going to discuss an altarpiece you may have overlooked during your last visit to the Ferraria. Altarpiece that stands directly opposite Titian's celebrated Madonna de Cop Pesaro. This altarpiece, a scene of martyrdom by Palma Giovanni. Not an artist you're, you're likely to be terribly familiar with. His full name is Jacobo Palma the Younger, or Jovene, which is to distinguish him from his great uncle, also a painter, Palma il Vecchio, or the Older. Palma Jovene was the most celebrated artist active in Venice between the death of Tintoretto in 1594 and his own death in 1628. Over his long career, he produced more than 600 paintings. And as a measure, of his merit as an artist. Our late trustee, the great scholar David Roseanne, was sufficiently taken with Palma Giovane's talents that he chose the painter to be the subject of his PhD dissertation. Now about the altarpiece. It depicts the martyrdom of St. Catherine of Alexandria and stands as a superlative example of Palma Giovane's mature style. Here, Catherine kneels and looks heavenward, her hands clasped in prayer. All around her, a scene of confusion of flying bodies unfolds. The crowd is reacting to a miracle that Catherine has just performed. Having provoked the ire of the Roman Emperor Maxentius for her devotion to Christ, she was ordered to be executed on a spiked wheel. With one touch, however, she shattered the wheel, and the assembled crowd responds with disbelief, recoiling in shock. She knows she'll be beheaded shortly, however, and in anticipation of her martyrdom, the heavens open above and angels descend with laurel wreaths and martyrs' palms. My favorite passage in the painting is undoubtedly this man who balances on one foot as he teeters backward. We've all experienced this moment when a foot slides out from underneath us. Toma Giovane has thought very carefully about what this looks like developing a pose of considerable sophistication that conveys maximum energy. The story of how he arrived at a style of painting that relies on groups of dynamically posed figures set in soaring spaces begins with his birth in Venice around 1548. He was born into a family of painters and very quickly distinguished himself, as is clear from the offer he received from the Duke of Urbino at only the age of 18. The Duke invited him to come work at his court in Urbino and then supported him for at least a couple years in Rome, where Palma Giovane discovered ancient sculpture, Michelangelo, and approached art that emphasized contours and drawing. By around 1570, he was back in Venice, where he's thought to have entered Titian's workshop. He was at least in a position at Titian's death in 1576 to acquire Titian's unfinished Pieta, which he then completed, an undertaking that would have only strengthened his appreciation for Titian's manner of suggesting the playoff surfaces with extremely broken, loose brushstrokes. Shortly after Titian's death, Palma Giovane received his first major commission. He was among the painters selected to help repaint the ceiling of the Sala del Maggiore Consiglio in the Plaza Ducale after fire had ravaged the structure in 1577. Palma contributed three canvases, including Venice crowned by victory, which we see that Titian was not the only Venetian painter who'd captured his imagination. The great Tintoretto was an even stronger presence, especially in the portrayal of muscular figures in action. Clearly, Palma had studied Tintoretto's major paintings, including the one that originally put him on the map, his Miracle of the Slave. Note the attention paid to the depiction of the nude figures and the strong sense of motion that's conveyed in the many twisting bodies, not least that of the flying saint. These are some of the key ingredients that Palma Giovane combines in his martyrdom of St. Catherine, contorted bodies like these and plenty of bulging muscles. 
The painting was completed in 1595, the year after Tintoretto died. Maybe Palma took particular pains to imitate Tintoretto, knowing that he was now the single painter in Venice who could assume the mantle of the late master. Whatever the case, the painting was not universally admired when it was unveiled. As the story goes, the monks of the Ferrari disapproved of Palma Giovanni's violent style, and it took his friend, the man shown here, the esteemed sculptor Alessandro Vittoria, to convince them otherwise, to make them see the artistic merits of the work. Those of you who may have visited the Ferrari any time recently may have struggled yourself to appreciate the painting's beauty, especially when Titian's glorious Pesaro Madonna is competing for your attention across the way. The painting is last recorded as having been treated in 1821. Over time, the work's brilliant colors have faded, covered by thick layers of darkened varnish. This is all now being remedied thanks to Save Venice, which has allocated funds for a comprehensive restoration. Last year, the painting was removed from its frame and taken to a makeshift conservation lab at the back of the Ferrari, where Giulio Bono and his team have begun a meticulous process of cleaning the surface with special solvents. Here you see some of the early results on the right, uncleaned, on the left, cleaned. Bono has also directed his attention to making sure the canvas is properly stretched thus perfectly taut with no warping in order to prevent cracks in the paint. Here's the back of the painting with its old wood stretcher from the 19th century that's been strengthened in places. And here's Bono's colleague Thomas Nelson at work preparing the canvas to be strip lined where the edges are reinforced with more canvas to allow the painting to be tacked to the stretcher without fear of ripping. Besides the painting, Save Venice is also focused on repristinating the altar itself, which is covered in grime. After examining the structure's stability and making any necessary repairs, conservator Egidio Alongo will clean the stonework, which includes these two columns carved from Pavanizetto marble. The cleaning promises to reveal the beautiful purple veining that's characteristic of this kind of stone. Palma Giovane's martyrdom of St. Catherine is a classic example of the kind of ambitious restoration projects that are at the heart of St. Venice's mission. Of course, without the generosity of our supporters, these would be all but impossible. With the martyrdom of St. Catherine, we're still searching for a sponsor, which could be you. Please visit SaveVenice.org for more information as well as for other ways that you can help us preserve the city that we all hold so dear. Thank you.